So hello and welcome everyone. I am Jadal Sanya and in this video we are going to solve the question game of XOR. So before moving on to the video, let's keep the target of 50 likes in this video and let's start with the video. So first of all, let's try to understand the problem statement. The problem statement is pretty easy to understand. So given an array of size n, the value of an array is denoted by bitwise XOR of all the elements it contains. Find the bitwise XOR of the of values of all the subarrays of A. So you will be given an array, and what you have to do, you have to find out the bitwise XOR of all the subarrays of the given array. So let's take an example which is given to us over here. So in this example, the value of n is equivalent to 3, and the array elements are 1, 2, and 3. So now what all subarrays are possible? So the subarrays possible are 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, and 3. The subarrays starting with index 1 will be 2, 2 and 3 and 3. So these are the subarrays which are possible for the given array. And now we have to find out the bitwise XOR of every element, every subarray. So the bitwise XOR of this will be 1. So bitwise XOR of 1 and 2, that will be 0, 1. And this is the bitwise XOR. Let's try to find out 1, 1 and 0. So this is going to be 3. So this is 3. And now for this, what will be the bitwise XOR? So the bitwise XOR of 1, 2 is 3. and the bitwise XOR of 3 will be equivalent to, uh, it will give you 0 and over here it will be 2. So what will be the bitwise XOR of 2 and 3? Let's try to find out. It will be 0, 0 and 1. So this will be 1. And now for this it will be 3. So let's try to find out 1 XOR 3 XOR uh, 0 XOR 2 XOR 1 and XOR 3. So this will come out to be 2. Right? So the answer for this test case comes out to be 2. Okay, And you can observe that I have find out the uh, bitwise XOR of all the subarrays. So basically you have to find out all the subarrays and find out the bitwise XOR of each and every subarray. And whatever is the final output, you have to print it in the output. So that is the entire question. right? So I hope you understood the question. And now let's move and understand what can be done and how we can approach this solution. Right? So let's start. So first of all, what I'll be doing, I'll be discussing the uh, basic approach over here. That is the brute force approach, which comes to my mind. So try to think what can be the brute force approach. So based on the explanation of the test case, you might have guessed that we can find out each and every subarray in the given input array and find out the XOR of all the subarrays. And that, that would be the output. If you have thought of a solution that works that way, then absolutely you have found the brute force approach. right? So what will be the brute force approach? The brute force approach is to find out, is to find all the subarrays, all the subarrays and do the XOR, right? So this is the bitwise XOR process. So this is how you can find out. Let's try to see the algorithm, how you can find out all the subarrays. I hope you, everyone knows how to find out all the subarrays. So I'll be having one loop that will be going from i is equal to 0 to i is lesser than n, right? And there will be one more loop that will be starting from, that will be starting from j is equal to i to j is lesser than n, right? And now there will be one more for loop. And this inner for loop will be for finding the XOR of all the elements included in the range i to j. So what I did, I have iterated over the uh, array elements for the variable i and I have iterated over the array elements for the variable j. j will run from i to n and i will run from i to n. Right. So what will be the inner for loop? The inner for loop will run from i is equal to 0 to Basically for k is equal to 0 to k is lesser than or equal to j and it will find out the XOR, bitwise XOR of all the elements included. So let's say I have a temporary variable inside this uh, for loop and that for loop will be basically, let's say this is my temporary variable. This temporary variable has been initialized with 0. So now temporary variable, I'll use it to find out the bitwise XOR of all that elements. That would be array of i. Right. So now I have found the bitwise XOR of all the elements in this manner. And this is one of the subarray which you will be finding. And now what you need to do, you need to have one result element. You need to have one result element and that result element will be initialized to zero. And at the end, you can simply after finding the bitwise XOR of a subarray, just do the XOR of result and the bitwise XOR which you have found over here. And that would be inside the temporary variable. 
So now here is the entire logic to find out all the subarrays and do the bitwise XOR, right? So this is the brute force approach and let's try to analyze that whether this approach will work or not. So over here, if you try to observe the time complexity, what will be the time complexity of this approach? So let's try to analyze the time complexity. The outer for loop runs n number of times, the inner for loop runs n number of times and the inner for loop, which is over here, this will also run n number of times in worst case. If that subarray includes all the elements, then the for, this for loop will also run n number of times. So what will be the time complexity over here? Obviously it is going to be n cube and this time complexity will not be accepted because of the constraint. So this is the time complexity of this approach and now what will be the space complexity? Quickly, so the space complexity comes out to be constant as I'm not using anything that is dependent upon the input test case, right? So this is the time and space complexity. But if you have a look at the uh, question, you will be able to understand that the time and space complexity are expected to be order of n and order of one respectively. That means linear time complexity algorithm is required over here, but we have found n cube, right? So we need to optimize the entire solution. Let's try to understand what can be the optimal approach. So now let's try to discuss the second approach, which is going to be the optimal approach. So in the optimal approach, before understanding the optimal approach, I would like to mention few of the properties of bitwise, right? So let's say if you do the bitwise element A and element A, that is bitwise XOR of the same elements, you will be getting zero, right? So now if you do the bitwise XOR in this manner, if you do the bitwise XOR odd number of times, you will get the element A. Let's take A is equal to two, right? So two XOR two will be giving you zero, zero, one, zero and zero, one, zero. You can observe the bitwise XOR will be equivalent to zero. Now let's say if I do the XOR three number of times, right? So what will be the output? It will be, see, this is two twice two, right? And uh, now that will be the result. Zero will be the result of uh, this and now what I'll be doing, I'll be adding one more two. So that would be bitwise of uh, two, three number of times. So that would be again two, right? So basically if you do the element, if you do the bitwise XOR of any element, odd number of times, basically you will be getting zero. So bitwise XOR of A and that is even number of times, even times what you will be getting, you will be getting zero. And now similarly, if you do bitwise XOR, odd number of times, you will be getting the same element, you will be getting the element A. So this is the important property and based on this property, what I will be doing, I will be finding out my optimal approach. So please keep this in mind that this is the important property that bitwise XOR of any element, even number of times will be giving you zero and bitwise XOR of any element, odd number of times will give you that same element. All the elements are going to be A only. Basically, let's say if you are taking two, all the elements are going to be two only. So now, how will this approach, how will this observation help me out? So as I mentioned, let's take the first example, which we just saw right now. So this is the first example. And now let's say, so what, what was the question? The question was to find out the bitwise XOR of all the subarrays of the given array, right? So basically that means you have to find out the uh, XOR of, let's say this is the first subarray, do the XOR with the second subarray, do the XOR with the third subarray, one, two, three, do the XOR with the uh, other subarray and keep on doing in this manner, right? So you have to include all the subarray, you have to include the elements from all the subarrays, XOR with three, right? And what will be the output? The output over here in this scenario comes out to be two. So basically if you remove the brackets, so this is what it looks like. So basically you have to find out the XOR of this many elements, right? So now over here, you can observe the elements are being repeated, right? So one is repeated, right? So one is occurring how many number of times? It is occurring thrice. So two is also repeated, two is occurring this many number of times, right? So how many times two is occurring? I can see one, two, three, and four. How many times, what is the frequency of two in this? The frequency of two is even. The frequency of two is even. Two is having four as its frequency, right? So XOR of any element or even number of times will give you zero. So this will be cut, right? So this will be cut down. And now what is the frequency of one? The frequency of one is what? It is equivalent to three. It is equivalent to three frequency. Odd number of times. So you will be getting the same element. Right? So now what is the frequency of three? I can see one, two and three. Three is also occurring how many times? 
three number of times it is occurring odd number of times so the xor of 3 three number of times will give you 3 so now what will be the xor final xor will be nothing but xor of 0 1 and 3 so basically 0 xor 1 xor so this will be 0 0 1 and 0 1 1 what will be the output of this xor so the output will come out to be 2 and that is your output right so basically over here you need to find out that ith element what will be the frequency of the ith element in all these sub arrays possible if you know the frequency of ith element you can conclude whether it will uh, be zero or whether it will be the same element so now let's say to observe let's say to find out so the important point which we uh, just saw right now is that find the frequency find the frequency of ith element in all the sub arrays all the sub arrays so for this let's say to observe how we can quickly find the frequency of the ith element right so now let's say over here this is the entire array a new example 1 2 3 and 4 and now what i will be doing i will be quickly mentioning all the sub arrays 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 and 4 2 2 3 2 3, 3 and 4 3 3 4 and 4 right so along with this i'll be mentioning the indexing i is equal to 0 i is equal to 1 i is equivalent to 2 and i is equivalent to 3 now i want to find out that whether the i is equal to 1 the element at this position how many times is this what is the frequency of 2 in all the sub arrays so basically i can see the 2 is occurring over here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so basically if i try to find out what is the frequency of the ith element i will be getting a very concise formula and what will be that formula let's say to observe okay so now over here this element 2 i want to find out that this element 2 can be the part of how many elements how many sub arrays so it can be the part of this sub array it can be the part of this sub array that means 2 3 2 and 2 3 and 4 so on the right hand side it can be the part of three sub arrays and on the left hand side it can be the part of 1 2 and 2 similarly basically i can see in the left hand side can be the part of two sub arrays right so there can be different different combination so on the right on the left hand side i can see it can be the part of 1 2 and 2 so this is my left hand side and what is the right hand side it will be 2 2 3 2 3 and 4 right so basically this can be the combination so now over here how to find out how many sub arrays are possible so basically you simply need to find out you, this can be combined with any of this right it can be combined with any of this so basically you have to find out that how many sub arrays will include the ith element in the left hand side and how many sub arrays will include the ith element in the right hand side right on the right hand side you can see over here for this what is the answer the answer came out to be 3 for right hand side for right hand side the answer came out to be 3 so what is that value so that value is nothing but n minus i try to think on this n is what n is equivalent to 4 in this scenario and what is i i is equivalent to 1 right so this is equivalent to 1 so n minus i what is n minus i that is 4 minus 1 is equivalent to 3 basically on the right hand side there are three sub arrays that will include 2 and on the left hand side that would be i plus 1 i can see this and this these are the two sub arrays right so basically i plus 1 that is 1 plus 1 that comes out to be 2 and if you multiply this values i plus 1 and n minus 1 basically as i mentioned the cross combination can be done so 3 into 2 that comes out to be 6 and that means that the frequency of 2 will be 6 in all the sub arrays among all the sub arrays and if you want to check you can have a look over here you can observe this are the 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 six sub arrays are possible in which 2 is included right there are six sub arrays in which 2 can be included so basically this is how you can find out the total number of frequency of the ith element in all the sub arrays right so the formula let me just write down the formula that is i plus 1 into n minus i this gives you the frequency okay so this gives you the frequency of ith element in all sub arrays in all the sub arrays right so now basically you have to find out whether this frequency let's say this is frequency of ith element if this frequency if this frequency is odd 
If this frequency is odd, then what does it mean? It will contribute the same element in the XOR. So basically, let's say if you will be having the result element, if you will be having the result element, right? So that you will be simply doing the XOR with the result element. Result XOR ith element array of i. And if it is equivalent to E1, if that frequency is E1, then what you have to do? You have to simply ignore it because the uh, XOR of E1 elements, basically even number of times will be equivalent to zero. That is the entire observation, right? I hope you understood every observation. Now let's say to have the look at the implementation part. So over here I've implemented the entire algorithm in Java, but the same can be implemented in other languages as well. So I have used one result variable initialized to zero that will be storing the final result. Now I have iterated over every element. I'm trying to find out the frequency of ith element. So frequency will be i plus one into n minus one, right? Left hand side multiplied with the total number of possibilities in the right hand side. And now if the frequency is odd, if the frequency is odd, then only the ith element will contribute in the result. So I have done the XOR with the result of the ith element. If it is equivalent to E1, then obviously it will be uh, reduced down to zero. So I'm not including it, right? And at the end, you simply need to return the result variable. So let's say to submit it and let's say to see the acceptance. And while it is getting accepted, what will be the time in space complexity? complexity? Try to think. Obviously, it is observable that the time complexity in this scenario comes out to be linear because we have only a single for loop, right? So the time complexity comes out to be order of n and the space complexity comes out to be order of 1. So that is the entire part. And we can see that the problem has been successfully submitted. So that was it for in this video. I hope you really enjoyed the solution and do hit the like button and share it with your friends. I will be seeing you in the next video. Thank you.